Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. I'm Martin Warwick and I'm talking with Andrew Coward. Andrew, welcome. You noticed that I didn't introduce you as per the company you're with because things are changing and that's the reason we're talking at the moment. Now, until very recently you were Senior Executive at Brocade. Brocade has been uh, sold uh, to Broadcom and you're going off, you're striking off on your own with a company called Lumina Networks. As they say, it's shining a light on the industry. Um, tell us what Lumina is and what you've done, Andrew. As many people know, Brocade's been in the software networking business over the last few years, and, and those assets uh, have been distributed and, and sold off. And um, as Lumina Networks, we were able to snag the um, SDN controller assets um, from Brocade and, and put them into this new company, uh, which, as you say, we've called Lumina Networks. Um, that's kind of representative of the history of using Open Daylight um, as, as the open source distribution for the controller and this kind of idea of bringing light, as you say, and knowledge um, through into the industry. Now, we've known each other as friends for a long time now and I've observed and interviewed you many times in different places, but now this is a whole different ball game, isn't it? You're starting from scratch. Let's start with that. What's it been like doing it? Exciting, I guess, is the <laughs> word I'd probably use. <laughs> you said with a uh, shake. <laughs> Um, now, it's interesting that we're not starting from scratch. Um, there's three years worth of technology we're bringing into this. Um, there's three years worth of customer relationships that we're bringing into it. And there's a team of 50 people that we start with from day one. Um, so the challenge has actually been making all that happen um, and, and getting all the customers along for the journey. And we're very fortunate that um, the tier one, a couple of the tier one ca carriers uh, in the US have come along for the ride with us, as are a number in Asia as well. Um, so that 200 customer base is really important. Where are you going to be headquartered? So San Jose is our headquarters. Um, we will have teams, we have teams in the UK, um, in Australia and India, um, which we're using as seeds to kind of grow out um, the business as we, uh, as we move forward. Let's move on. I want to talk to you about what the business is going to do. What's the main objective of Lumina Networks? As we've worked in the SDN controller business over the last few years, we started out by having this controller in the market and we expected people to just come along and take it from us and, and download it and pay for it and use it. And to some extent that happened. But what we found was a lot of uh, our customers um, couldn't actually take it out of the lab and deploy it without considerable help. So we built out um, what we termed a net dev team um, to work alongside our developers and actually help customers get these projects out of the lab and into the live network. So make, them, make the controller work with all the network equipment, um, make it work with all the provisioning and management tools, and actually deliver that as a, as a live solution. And that live solution, given the, the, the way the market works, are you using open source products to, to, to do this for Lumina and for your customers? Or are you coming at it from another angle? So we started with open source, and we use open source, uh, and particularly the Open Daylight Project, and others too, um, because we found that our customers want to make sure that this layer in the network is kept as open source because it gives them uh, the maximum choice of what products they put um, underneath that in terms of uh, whether it's legacy or virtualized infrastructure and the choices above that. So they're not trapped in these, these vertical stacks that vendors can very often lock um, service providers into. You mentioned, Andrew, that service providers have been testing this technology for more than two years now. But face integration challenges, particularly in bringing this to the outside world. Things get stuck in the lab, as you mentioned. Why? The biggest challenge that we've seen play out is that um, because the technology is perceived as new, um, there's the question about how the new and the old are supposed to work together. Um, and there is no such thing as greenfield um, for, for most deployments or any deployments we see. So. The simple question is, how are we going to make that open source technology work with all of the legacy and existing products in that network and, and help make that migration? Uh, and so our job really has been to take that open source project in open daylight and, and work with it to make it kind of go southbound to all the products and northbound to all of the management tools um, and deliver that integration. Um, but let's not escape why are we doing this or why would a carrier actually want to take things out of the lab in the first place, which is that um, we're driving towards an automation outcome, um, meaning that we want to make it easy for the business logic that drives services and so on uh, to be abstracted from the actual product that makes the decision around what packet to forward or what to do. Um, and that automation is what drives the cost um, parameter, cost 
dynamics down radically and also kind of gives this choice as well in terms of how, how the uh, products are used and what products get used in the future. So it's that, it's that dynamic that's really important. So Andrew, look, I don't know whether you're a gambler or not, but you've taken a gamble in this. Has it been a, a risky business as it were so far? In the startup space, there are three things you're not supposed to do. Um, you're not supposed to uh, work with service providers because it takes too long for them to make decisions. You're not supposed to use open source because nobody understands the business model for it. And you're not supposed to do an integration type business with that because the multiples off that aren't great. So we decided to break all those rules, uh, which sounds like a huge gamble. But in fact, um, there's three years of experience that tell us otherwise. We're bringing three years worth of product into this. We're bringing three years worth of customer interactions and business with this. Uh, and so that gives us a kind of ability to, um, to execute straight off the ground and creates this really high barrier to entry that other otherwise would be the case. And the other part is we think we've cracked the open source model as it relates to networking um, in the way we license, in the way we deliver the product to market um, that seems to be getting a lot of traction right now. Are you more or less then without competitors at the moment? We see a couple of small competitors out there that um, are doing distributions, but there's something that's very unique about our business model is that um, in addition to providing a distribution to the market um, of Open Daylight, um, we are also running these agile models to help our customers develop and integrate them into their network. Now, rather than have a traditional vendor that says, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll spend two years on this, this scope of work and we'll, we'll write this, we're taking, the, the approach is very different because we're actually working with our customers in two week sprints to make this transition. We're delivering the project with them and not to them. And, and that's quite a change from how most vendors have traditionally dealt with service providers. Um, and that paradigm shift means that <clears throat> these service providers themselves are learning as they go through this whole approach. They're getting the same uh, understanding of what their network is supposed to do as, as we do. And it gets away from this, this traditional problem we've seen where an RFI or IFP comes out from a carrier and it's basically something that's simply been rewritten from 15 years ago or 10 years ago with, you know, please virtualize this and add SDN into it. Uh, into a, a real understanding of, of what the service provider needs to make the transition. Um, and so that business model, combining that agility with the open source, um, is exactly what we think the, the market needs, and that's the feedback we get, because we don't have to create the market for this to come to us. So Andrew, as far as I can tell, then Lumina Networks here is acting as a catalyst. You're speeding the reaction, as it were, without changing yourself, um, in that Service providers can add their projects to make things happen and you provide, I was going to say in the secret source, but that's not right, but you know what I mean, you provide the expertise and the capability for service providers to do things rather more quickly, in fact very much more quickly than we would have done. We think so, and, and so it, <clears throat> we've been quite selective with the customers that we're working with, to the extent that they tend to be customers that already have projects that they've started. There's a seed of expertise in there, they've got the components they need, and they just need that something extra to help them with that integration piece, with that getting over the barrier into that new world. And <clears throat> that's really what we've, we've been able to demonstrate and show with, with some of the largest carriers on the planet that we have that capability. And, and that's the model we'll use going forward. Final question to you then. If I was just talking to you, you know, the old elevator pitch and we were just wandering along a cor corridor and you were going to get into, a, into a, an elevator and I said, so what does Lumina do? What do you want to do? How's it going to go? What would you say? I'd say, we're helping our service provider customers get their projects, their open source projects, out of the lab and into their networks, making that controller layer work with anything legacy that's there, plus all the new virtualization components, and delivering that in a, in a simple package that they can consume in a kind of agile, step-by-step -step method um, that really delivers results. Well, Andrew, you're now CEO of Lumina Networks. First of all, congratulations. As I say, we've been friends for a long time. Congratulations and the very best of luck. Thank you very much, Martin. It's been a pleasure.